Hello YouTube and welcome to another Counterpoint Life DIY tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at some gardening related activities and in particular garden edging. And here we are at a state home near my house and the reason I have come here is because predictably they are using iron garden edging in their uh, design. The reason that you may want to do something similar is because you may be going for a similar aesthetic or you might want to be trying to create big sweeping curves or tight curves and you'll find that iron is a far better option than timber to do those things. So we're going to look at how to prepare to do this yourself and the installation. And there are a few things that you're going to need and they're on your screen so I'll let you pause to read those in detail. But we're going to go ahead and look at uh, tacking on some of the supports to make installation easier. Stress less if you don't have a welder you can in fact get around it by simply putting the edge in place and then bashing in a peg in front of it as you see here. And this will work quite well if you've got largely uh, straight edges to do and uh, you'll end up with a finish that looks something like this but it's a little bit more difficult if you're on your own or trying to do some really tight curves. Alright, once you get your steel from the metal merchant, ask for it to be cut into strips and they will do that for you for a fee using a guillotine so you'll need to clean up some of those edges just with either a grinder or some sandpaper. Once you've done that, you're going to divide it up into five or so sections depending on your needs and we're going to need to grind off some of that core tent coating. Just similar to galvanizing it uh, doesn't take too well when you're trying to weld through it. So you need to clean that up. If you're using mild steel, then you won't need to worry too much about this. If it's fresh, it should be um, pretty easy to tack straight onto. All right, once that's done, you're going to take your 3mm uh, metal rod and you're going to cut it into 200mm sections like you see here. Or if you're using uh, something else, Rio or anything similar, it'll do the job. You just want a similar length to each other and you're going to attach them to your edging like so and then we're going to tack it in place. There's a couple of reasons why you do this although it's a bit of mucking around at this stage. It will mean that when it comes to installation it's far easier and you can certainly do it on your own. It also allows you to have your edging raised above the ground because all of this is happening on the inside of the bed so you won't see it and that's a little bit harder if you are doing it just by getting a peg in front of it. Alright, once you're done there, you just need to do a bit of center punching and drilling out of a hole in the top corner at the end of each section, or both ends. And once that's done, give everything that was welded or ground a coat of paint just to protect it while it's in the soil. To join the sections, we're just going to use some scrap metal. I have some scrap uh, galvanized sheet lying around, so I'm just going to cut some rectangles out of that. And we're going to use that to join the sections of edging where we drilled out those little holes before. So once you've cut out a few, uh, that's all you need to do. We'll drill those once the edging is in the ground. So measure out each section. Although you can bend the iron edging into pretty tight bends, find you always end up with a better finish if you actually cut it. But you just need to decide on, on your own situation. Alright, installation. Once you've marked out your garden bed, you just need to cut along those edges using a post hole shovel. I'm going to recess my garden beds because we have blackbirds in our area and they delight in taking your mulch and spreading it around your yard and your path and pretty much everywhere. So I find that rather annoying. Hopefully by recessing the beds it'll take care of that. Get your edging and just bend it to the curves that you've marked out. Once you're happy that it's close enough, you can place it uh, in the bed there and prepare to install it. 
And again, this is really quite straightforward once you're at this point. If you have those little stays welded on there, it means you can do this job very easily on your own. And just little by little, you're working it into position. Ideally, you want the edge to be about two centimeters below your ground level so that when you're mowing, you don't trash your mower or the edge. I'm using synthetic lawn here because it's the only thing that actually grows in our area. So once mine's in place, I'll just need to backfill and trim it. You may need to add some, uh, some runners or reseed around the edges if you've got a real turf lawn. Alright, so to do a join, uh, you're going to use those little scrap pieces of metal we cut before. You'll see that the edges come together and they almost butt up. Um, it's a little hard if you have some tight curves. When you've got straight lines, you should be able to get them pretty close. That edge there is probably not, not quite as close as I would have liked. But you take your scrap metal and you drill a hole in it. Just do one at this stage and we're going to use a pop rivet to put that in place. Once that's done, you just drill straight through the hole of the next section. And I found that although you know, it's a little bit awkward to do it like this, you end up having to, to adjust any pre-drilled holes anyway, so you might as well just do it all at once. Then you rivet that one in place and you've got a good strong join there between the sections. So you just backfill it like before and clean up and you're done. So I recommend that you give this a go, particularly if you're looking to do some interest, interesting shapes in your garden or if you're going for that rust uh, look aesthetic, which will happen over time and there's some photos of that at the end. Um, it certainly is reasonably straightforward and cost effective if you do it yourself. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.